With Coda in the books, we turn our t- attention to Richmond, baby. We are headed to some short track action. We have the package from Phoenix uh, heading to there. So we'll talk about what that means. We'll talk about if the Fords are worth a look at all. They have been um, probably not borderline dumpster fire. And uh, is it Toyota or bust this week on the angle of pursuit podcast? Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on red. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Brian Twining, we are going to talk all things Richmond today, get people set, the early look at the uh, outright odds, look at our betting card, all that good stuff. But first, we got to talk Coda. We got to talk William Byron's dominance. Uh, a guy, Chris Wormy, compared him to Jimmy Johnson, which seems pretty good. Um, continually, the smartest guy on the track. The sim racing seems to be paying off. Uh, unlike Kobayashi, who is apparently a sim maven, um, the pit crew has been unbelievable and yeah. continues to put him in position to get here and there and eventually win the race. So, um, Coda is in the books. We can look at the DraftKings uh, plays. We'll look at our betting card and kind of talk through it. But I guess from your perspective initially, William Byron just. You know, I felt like Christopher Bell at points had a shot. I I thought our guy Ross was looking really good early and then kind of faded. Um, Alex Bowman was there until he wasn't. And, um, you know, when when Byron got that two-second lead towards the end, it was basically uh, night-night for the rest of the field. Yeah, it was really interesting to see how I think Christopher Bell was probably – slightly better than William Byron just in terms of his car because of how well he was able to move throughout the field. But yet again, a pit crew mistake that cost him multiple what is it like two and a half, three seconds uh, kind of ruined the day for him because he was there towards the end. Now, yeah. how much of that was William Byron saving and just making sure he didn't make a mistake? Well, we'll probably never know, but yeah. you know, again, this is multiple races this year. We've seen Christopher bell be up front and then, William Byron, just again, he continues to fly under the radar as somebody that we just, we don't ever think, oh, he's really good here. And yet again, he just shows up and is the most consistent guy on the track and on pit road, which by all intents and purposes is what wins races in today's NASCAR cup series. So I, I don't see why he's not the championship favorite going forward and somebody that we look at on a week to week basis, regardless of track as somebody who's a favorite to win that week either. Yeah, and I love how like I bet William Byron all the time, but I didn't bet him this week, and I didn't bet him at Daytona the two times he wins. <laughs> so frustrating. Yeah. Um, so let's look at DraftKings, where uh, we had a good week. Uh, so this is the $24 single entry. Uh, Christopher Bell was in the lineup and ended up having a nice day, even if Kyle Busch is butthurt about something. He wants to fight Christopher Bell because he's the biggest, toughest guy on the track, apparently. Uh, Tyrone Ty Gibbs uh, was solid. McDriver, everyone had something around McDriver, whether it was a top 10 bet, a top <laughs> four. So bet, frustrating. Uh, DraftKings play, and he just, he was fine. Like, he was going to have a good day. His car just wasn't having it, and that was frustrating. Yeah. Um, so even with McDriver's minus 10 points, is still was able to cash pretty nicely, so I'm happy with that. Obviously, Busher was really strong. Bowman was really strong, and... Five to go, Chase Briscoe, rolling in the top ten. I'm like, come on, baby, let's get this thing done. And, of course, he finishes 13th. <laughs> hey, just be happy he didn't get hit with a track limit penalty. This this race was a little frustrating with, uh, obviously, the McDriver stuff. But track limits, pit road issues, speeding, yeah. at a road course, those things derail your day. Just ask Chase Elliott. Like. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear that they tried to appeal that. Like NASCAR is going to be like, "Oh yeah, no, you're Chase Elliott. You're you're good." No, they. If there's anybody who's going to get the, "Oh, you're Chase Elliott," it's probably Chase Elliott. Yeah, but they drivers should have known after after Saturday's events, like they're in the truck in the Xfinity series. NASCAR was no holds barred with this thing. Like if you were 
fractions of a centimeter outside the track limits, they were going to penalize you and there yeah. was no leeway there. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of dumb when you, when you want these guys to race these cars on their, on their absolute limits, like it, it, these guys are going to have to take different lines and some of them are going to get squirrely around a corner. Like it, it's one thing if they're intentionally cutting one of the, one of the S curves to cut, cut off time. But for like when Elliot had to like, readjust this car because he, somebody got into him. Hey, how are you going to penalize somebody when that's the only way they can continue to move forward? Yeah. They should just put a launch ramp at the front of the S curve. So you can just <laughs> jump the whole thing. A little Dukes of hazard style end up on the other side. Oh, you take that risk, it's all you. Uh, yeah. Dale Earnhardt senior would not have been happy with this track. He would have been like, oh, let, me no. cut corners, let me slide through the infield. I'm going to get my way to the front. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. So this was a fun lineup. I'm happy it, it did so well. And, um, obviously it was nice to have a strong week. Uh, this was the other one we cashed. We, this was the Larson, Chastain, Gibbs, Busher, Bowman, and even Stenhouse. Like Stenhouse ended up not having that great of a day, only moved forward to one spot. But there was a couple times where he was looking like he was going to move forward, maybe be like a mid-pack guy. And obviously Ricky Stenhouse I mean, his way to the back. It was it was uh, pretty convenient that he and Bubba Wallace were amongst the first two guys to spin out and if you had watched uh chris wormy's um pre-race poll i don't know who said it but they were talking about bubba wallace the first guy to spin would be like one of their favorite bets and sure enough sure enough it it was between bubba and then like stenhouse about a lap later or something but yeah it was an interesting day in dfs because you know william byron it it came down to whether or not you chose Ty Gibbs like we did or William Byron. Like Byron was much more expensive, but he led, I think he led some like almost 40 laps, 40 of the 67 laps. So yeah. if you didn't have him, you had no shot of, you know, hitting the optimal lineup or winning yeah. in like a large GPP. Yeah. Uh, we did have Byron. He was only 20%, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, Busher was good. Briscoe was good. Briscoe scored almost as much as Byron. Ryan Priest was fine. Daniel Suarez was the other donkey that was causing lots of trouble. He seemed to just be, I don't know, doing weird stuff, having having a rough day. I was kind of surprised. I figured he'd be pretty rock solid, so it was obviously frustrating to see him in the way he did. And even Kyle Larson to a lesser extent, but I know he had some, had some track issues. Yeah, it... Honestly, it was a really interesting race. I know a lot of people probably think it was boring just because we didn't get, I don't think we had a single caution for cause. Um, like you saw the most dominant cars up front in Christopher Bell and William Byron, but the guys who we thought were going to be comers were actually goers uh, like Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson. Neither of them made headway in terms of making their way through the field, you know, past really good road course racers. And I think for, Chase Elliott's for on Chase Elliott. I think we have to really start looking at him going forward as just the next level of, of guys. Like he, he has become a ace as you called him last year. Like he is no longer the Elliott that we saw in 2022 and before. Like, yeah, he, he is a level below the William Byron's, the Ross Chastain's, the Christopher Bell's and all those guys. Yep, I was a year ahead of it, and I'm very proud of that. Um, With the stage breaks, it was really weird to see Christopher Bell stay out and push it. And it was have yeah, because it seemed like he could be a race winning car. So for him to make that decision seemed a little odd. Um, But I think I think they hit on that though when they when when it was coming towards the end of the stage when they were saying how he already had a win, and so they figured just stay out and get that playoff point just yeah. to improve your standing going into the playoffs to make it more likely that you advance because yeah. we've seen it uh the last two years specifically like you could have one bad race where your car wrecks and it screws your entire playoffs up no matter where you are in the standings going into it so i think bell is just trying to solidify his spot and look i i think it's pretty safe to say that christopher bell will win multiple races this year before we get to the playoffs just with how good his car is. So, you know, I, I don't mind them making that strategic call. Yeah. But in terms of overall, like stage break cautions, it didn't really seem to be a massive deterrent. It didn't seem like it would be anything crazy. Everything yeah. seemed the guys that were supposed to be up there kind of seemed like they were getting up there. So 
at least at least for that that was good yeah i do know that dur- also during the pre-race poll people had mentioned betting daniel suarez to win stage one and of course christopher bell left that up by staying out so mm-hmm. uh daniel suarez gets second tip of the glass for that one for everyone um this was probably the worst one. Tyler Reddick was underwhelming. The SVG was looking good, but never great. McDowell obviously was a train wreck. And then Bowman and Briscoe and then Eric Jones. So this was, you know, it's why you throw a few lineups in to see what you can get to stick and yep. um, see what happens. As for the betting card, um, a, a mix of results. Um <laughs> uh, for me, anyways, Brian <laughs> was um, in the red. So I'd like to thank Alex Bowman for uh, keeping keeping me in the green this week, up three units. So Bowman top 10, three to one, or uh, plus 125. That was my favorite bet from jump. Um, and it was still available up until like the night before the race, maybe even race day. So that was a good one. Someone on the betting pre or on Wormy's thing was saying they got it at plus 250, which seems like um found money so that was really nice yeah. and then i had bowman over Cindric was the bet of the century of the week i wish i'd put in like 15 units on that um <laughs> the people that thought austin Cindric was going to be good it was it just it made me cackle um and then larson over svg even with larson's underwhelming day it was solid and then busher over denny because you know denny at road course is just yeah he's not good it uh brian has lots of red he jumped on the chastain i felt good about the chastain bets um i felt like the mac driver bets were good if he his car didn't break um svg was fine until he wasn't um william byron destroyed your prop God, i was so angry about that because yeah. like i did not expect william byron to be that much faster than everybody else because if he if he was closer if his car was closer to that of Christopher Bell or say Ty Gibbs, I think we probably see three different guys lead like 15 laps. Yeah. Or if Bell doesn't stay out, I think he is very much in contention at the end, given yeah. what his car looked like. But yeah. Um, so overall, not not the best week for you. Fine week for me. I'm still up. Uh, you're in the red a little bit, but still a long way to go. So we can dig ourselves out of this. Um, and we're on to Richmond. We have uh, the Toyota Owners 400. Um, the Toyotas are going to own the race, or so it, it seems to be up here per the uh, the outright card. So Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Martin Truex, and Ty Gibbs are your top four cars, all inside 10 to 1. Larson has a nine to one at DraftKings, but you can find him at double digits in a lot of places. So we'll talk about him next. Yeah. Um, is it really the Toyota's world and we're just living in it? Look, I would probably rather just hit Toyota as winning manufacturer, which is like minus 125 at Caesars right now, because it. I think it's safe to say that the Toyotas have surpassed Chevy as a whole in 2024 from what I've seen, especially on these short tracks, because if this runs anything like what we saw in Phoenix, you can expect the Toyotas to be up front for the majority of the day. And so I just don't see a way that even somebody like Larson is going to get up there and, and win the race. I mean, the only guy I could see is actually William Byron, who you're getting a discount on this week, but I don't even think he has anything for Denny bell or Ty Gibbs for that matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, of all these names, the the one that jumps out to me, and I'm not usually a, 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 a guy that backs him, but I love Martin Truex this week. I mean, just looking at his next-gen speed rankings, um, obviously good overall, but was really good in the spring race in both 2022 and 2023, was second in 2022, was fourth in 2023. We know what these Toyotas are doing. I don't really expect the 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 uh, package that they're bringing from Phoenix, the new short track package, to really make that big of a difference. Obviously, Bell and Larson and someone else were able to test it out, but it honestly didn't seem like it mattered that much in Phoenix. And I don't really, I'm not going to really um, adjust my priors this week just to to account for something that doesn't seem like it's going to have an impact. Yeah, yeah, I don't hate that. I think honestly, uh, I. 
said this on repeat multiple times. I just have such a hard time betting anybody at four to one, especially early in the week. Last week it was Reddick who opened like that. And then he qualified like shit. And then you saw two other guys join him in those ranks. So again, I'm, I'm not going to hit Denny or Christopher bell right now. I don't hate Martin Truex jr. It, this is going to sound disgusting, but the first guy I would go to is actually Gibbs at plus eight fifty to even consider inside that 10 to one number. And then I would skip right over Larson and William Byron at 12 to one at this point at any track is an absurd number. And I think he should be more along the lines of what we saw with Kyle Larson two years ago, every single week in that five, five and a half number. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we've been doing this for three years where we're always like, why is William Byron priced so long every time? (laughs) Yeah. He's he's like coming off a win, looking awesome at a place where he does well. Quote 14 to one, 12 to one, nine to one. And everybody else is like six or four. And it's like, what what are we doing? Uh, Yeah. So William Byron is going on the card. I'm trying to figure out what to do with uh, what to do with the old Marty party. Because yeah, it's hard to get there with him at that number because. Well, I think the number is fine. I'm just I'm wondering going, if we get through practice and qualifying and I see he's awesome. Then like, what's his, like, what's the shortest his number can get to with Denny, with Bell, with Gibbs, with Larson? Like, can he get to four or five to one? Cause if so, I'm going to hit it at seven. I but, mean, if he qualifies on pole, I think he definitely gets close to that. But I, you're also talking about a guy whose best starting position this year is seventh. And at Phoenix, where the Toyotas were the fastest during practice and qualifying, he was he started outside the top 10. He started 11th. So it's not like he's been the best amongst that group. And I don't see that just flipping on its head this week. So I think you might get a little bit of a longer number or even something similar even if he comes out and he shows decent speed or anywhere near his teammates. Yeah. And that's, that's why I'm like going back and forth. I'm like, do I pull the trigger now or do I sit it out and hope that, you know, we get a fine qualifying, but maybe someone else looks better or I, or maybe I just, if he looks like a rocket ship and he's five to one, then I just bet three units instead of two right now. Well, yeah, and I think that's something with with Truex, too. We've seen it in the past. When he unloads fast, he's going to be good on Sunday. So I think you wait for that, and then you take an even slightly shorter number on him. Yeah. So I I I added Byron at 12. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. It's the other name I want to add. At this Um, point, ridiculous. Yeah. Let's talk the the next few drivers, because I think there's some interesting options. Fortunately, most of them are Fords. Uh, Busher, Keselowski, Ryan Blaney. Just bet the top Ford market. Like I, it, I'm almost completely out of betting Fords to win on these types of tracks right now. Until we get to a super speedway where we know that you know the RFK and the Penske guys are going to be up there at the front. I, I just don't see a world where they can compete with the Toyotas and the Chevys right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know Kez got bet pretty hard at some books. I know Busher the same way. You can find them around 9 or 10 at some books, but then you can find them as long as 14. So if you want some some exposure to RFK, uh, shop it around because that, that number is pretty wild. Like Caesars has Kieslowski at 10, and other books have him at 14. So get your get your value if you're in on Kieslowski. And uh, also, I think it's important for people to remember, if they're going back to look at Phoenix results, you have to keep in mind about the weirdness that happened in stage three that allowed Brad Keselowski and Christopher Busher to make such a drastic move up inside the top 10 and have Busher finish runner up in that race because neither of those guys, from what I watched, were top five cars. No, they were like 15 to 20 all day. They, yeah, like I think they probably would have gotten top 10 just because, like, the just the, the, on the elongated runs, they were a little bit better than some of the other guys, but they were not top five worthy. No. Um, and Busher was actually, he's actually better in the fall race. He's, if you look at his splits, he was 13th and 12th in the spring races the last two years in terms of speed rankings. And he was fifth and second uh, in the fall, which, you know, I don't want to like go too crazy, like splitting this track up, but, Clearly, there's different weather. There's different elements. There's, th- you know, other stuff going on. Yep. And there's I think there's a reason why some guys do better in the spring and other guys do better in the fall. And 
I don't think it's t a completely random. So, um, yeah, I'm probably out on all the Fords this week. I'd rather bet, you know, I, I think it's Chevy, Toyota, or nothing. Do you have any interest in any of these long shots? Uh, Kyle I mean, Bush, you, Chase Elliott. You hit me up late last night about a number. <laughs> and look, I don't hate it. Joey Logano, uh, as we're speaking right now, you, if you are in Las Vegas, you can get him at 30 to 1 yeah. at Superbook still, which is absolutely crazy. Now, I'm not saying he's going to win, but we've seen him do this before where he qualifies well and then that number plummets. And this could be the same thing where you can just get potential value on an outright this early in the week and then hit him in matchups and go against him later against guys that didn't qualify as well, but will probably race better. Yeah. I mean, so he has the third best driver rating. His finishes since we'll go all the way back to like, I mean, this guy just owns this track. So he's got a, we go back, we'll start in 2017, which is years ago, but a first, a, a second, a fourth, a 14th, a second, 11th, third, third, fifth, 17th, sixth, seventh, and fourth. Like this guy is just incredible. And like when he got sixth in 22, um, you know, he was first after stage two. He had a, a 131.4 driver rating. He crushes it at this track. April, he's in, you know, in the in the spring races. He's solid. Obviously, there's times where he doesn't do well in the year. He finished 17th. He was fourth after stage two. Um, so, you know, it's He's a guy that's there, and if you're telling me I'm, you're going to bet a Ford, if I'm betting any Fords, I want to get paid out on it. So give me Logano. Give me a long number. Let's hope he qualifies well. And uh, and where he has in the past, like the last two years, his qualifying has been underwhelming. Uh, but prior to that, a lot of top tens. Um, I mean, I will say Logano was good. At, he's been good at Gateway as well, which is a direct – you know, correlation track for, for Richmond. So it's not a terrible number. I mean, I'm still sitting on freaking Logano over one and a half wins this year. So I'm not going to hate it. If he freaking gets one yeah. now, it, I don't know. I don't know if I could get there at that 22 spot with DraftKings. 25. I don't hate. I do know if it's still available when the wife gets to Las Vegas tomorrow, she will be placing a small shekel on that 30 to one price though. Yeah. Um, I just think like if he qualifies in that top 10, the 25 or 30, whatever you can get is 12 or 14. Like, I think, Oh yeah, he, for sure. No, I, I think he's I definitely up in see that. Kind of the only thing lane. I worry about is when you look at next gen stuff, like he hasn't qualified here. He's never qualified inside the top 10 in the next gen yeah. car at Richmond. Yeah. Uh, Logano speed ranking six, second, 10th and seventh over the last four races at Richmond. I don't know. It's just it, the number jumped out to me and maybe I'm a donkey or like taking the bait or whatever you want to say, but 25 to one is just too good of a number. I, d I just can't help myself. And maybe it's a, you know, a supplement bet for top Ford, um, top five, something like that. Cause I will. Yeah, have I'm interested to see those markets when we dive into that. Cause. Okay. So anything else here before we dive into Caesars and look at some of the, uh, the placements and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, keep just keep going down. Bowman? No. Suarez? Oh, maybe maybe we pass him. It's got to be the but it's 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 Bubba Wallace. There's no reason that a guy driving a Toyota who has is in at in the 2311 camp who we all know is extremely fast regardless yeah. of what his past results here are. If you can get this 45 or 50 to 1 number and you place a very small bet on this I mean, it probably the chances are very low, if not impossible, that this ha that this hits. But these cars are fast. Toyota yep. is the best. Uh, that from what we see, if this race is anything similar to what we saw at Phoenix, uh, they they are going to unload extremely fast. And Bubba's gotten better. Twenty two, he was twenty fourth and fifteenth in Richmond races in terms of total speed, and then in twenty three, he was thirteenth and tenth. So getting better. He's improving as a driver everywhere. He led uh, 80 laps here in the fall last year, too. So he can run up front. Yep. 
So I'm, I'm, I, I don't hate that. I, you know, if you want to grab some numbers now, wait for qualifying and then dive into the kind of the top of the board. I think Logano makes sense for that. I think Bubba Wallace makes sense for that. And honestly, you know, maybe even Alex Bowman makes sense for that. <laughs> it's probably stupid, but um, don't fall victim to the Bowman. I do this every year. I get excited about him. And then, you know, April last year, he was qualified on pole. He finished eighth. April the year before, he finished eighth. Uh, April the year before, he won the race. Um, so, you know, it's, maybe so we just qualify. I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's a better top 10 bet, especially at 50 to 1 or 60 to 1. That's 60 to 1 at Bet River is just tempting. Yeah. The one thing, though, is like I, it, I'm, I'm looking at the numbers right now. So, again, I'm going back to the top of the board. The reason why Ty Gibbs to me outside of William Byron is my favorite outright right now. He hasn't finished lower than 10th the last five races, and he's got top fives in three of the last four events. And he's also qualified on the front row in two of the last three events, including Phoenix, which is the closest race that we've had this year to what we're going to see in Richmond. So. Gibbs is probably going to pop off at that six, seven to seven to one number again. And you're going to be sad if you're not. I mean, I don't hate jumping in at that price either, but it's just crazy. He's literally has, hasn't won a race. He's been good, but like dudes just like all of a sudden, like inside 10 to one every single week. He's good, dude. Like He's really good. So crazy. It's wild, but uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's look at manufacturers because I think there's a lot of value. And then we'll go up and look at top 10s. We'll look at um, uh, qualifying and then all that good stuff. So top Ford. Logano 550. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's going on the card. (laughs) The only thing. Okay, so going back to his qualifying efforts here. I fell victim to this last week at Coda when I jumped on the the McDowell price. He qualified like shit, and then you got almost one and a half points on that top Ford number. Now, do you th- the betting this number right now? You're you're basically banking on him qualifying as the third best Ford and not outside the top twenty. Because if he qualifies outside the top twenty, even if he's the best Ford qualifying, this number is probably four to one. So. Yeah, I mean that's that is a good point. I just if the RFK boys kind of stink or are underwhelming, there might be. I don't know. I'm gonna grab a little bit of it and see what happens. I might double back if it, if the number gets a little bit longer. But if it was like three fifty or something, I might I might be a little more patient on it. Um. But 550 is a nice number, and I think makes sense. I don't think I'm betting anything else. Uh, uh, Top Toyota. um, Truex. Gibbs at 4.5 when you can bet him at 8-1 to to win the race. I like that. Although, uh, with Toyotas and our expectations of them, should we just be betting them to win the race since we think it's going to be a Toyota or very? Yeah. Likely? So, yeah. So I was just going to say that I think in, in this market for, because Toyota is the favorite, I mean, they're, they're minus money to win the freaking race as a manufacturer. So I yep. think the expectation is that the, to, blah, 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 I can't speak right now. The expectation is that the Toyotas are going to win the Toyota owners 400 and so just hit the outright market on, on the, yeah. all of these guys instead of betting the top Toyota market. Yeah, or like top three, and then, you know, it may be, maybe Truex wins with Gibbs and, um, you know, Hamlin behind, or Hamlin wins with Gibbs. And yep. So top three might be a better way. And that's every week we want to go through this because I think there's opportunities. You want to get the best of the number and the best of a chance to win your bets. Uh, Byron three, plus 310. I don't know. I don't feel is that is that good? I don't. <laughs> it's not as compelling as I thought it was. I kind of hoped it would be. Well, I mean, you have to you have to look at the manufacturer. Who who is his primary competition at, at Richmond? Is it Larson? 
it's Larson. And that's, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. Like, it really feels like it's the Toyotas and that's kind of it. I mean, Larson won the spring race last year. Man. I don't know. I would just rather just hit the William Byron stuff just because every single week he's always up there in position to take advantage of somebody's mistake or just, he's just so solid. He's probably going to finish this the second or third best Chevy. Well, that is of course, unless it's at Bristol where he's the first guy freaking wrecked two weeks in a row for me with him. And then McDowell last week at Coda. So take, take what I'm saying about William Byron with a grain of salt. Derailing my guy before he even has a chance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate Chastain either. I mean, we're, you're talking. Chastain has been. I'd rather bet Bowman at eight to one than Chastain at six. Serious? Yeah. I don't know about that. <clears throat> Chastain was the best finishing Chevy. He was the only Chevy to finish inside the top twelve at Phoenix. Um, was third here last year, but, um, a lot of like 24th, 18th, 19th, 15th, obviously Ganassi and premium motorsports isn't the same as what he has now, but yeah, but I also think it's important to look at Chastain's 2024 much differently than even what we did in 2023, just because he's running races. I, I, I guess you could kind of say more cautiously to where he's he's trying to avoid on track mistakes. Yes, he's he's had pit road issues, but I mean, four of the last five races have been seventh or better finishes. Yeah. That's consistency, and that's yeah. that's even with dealing with those pit road penalties. He's also been good. So, like, even in the races, like in twenty two, where he finished nineteenth and eighteenth, he was yeah. third after stage one and stage two. He uh, led 80 laps in uh, August of 22, um, was first after stage one, La uh, obviously third, uh, the year he finished third, he was third and fifth, he had a great race, so maybe I'm a little, maybe I'm over underrating him just a little bit here. Yeah, and that's what I think, like, I think Chastain is, I wouldn't call him a safe play by any means he's yeah. a hell of a lot safer than he used to be i can tell you that he knows exactly when to, push it and when to not push it yeah so i'm tempted to hit that top chevy number on him it's like caesars doesn't have top tens yet do we have top tens anywhere we got top fives. Oh, we got top tens at, at dk the draft kings all right let's head over there we got Logano at minus 120. Squeezing us again. Of course they are. DraftKings' top 10s are pretty much the worst. Uh, let's see here. God. They have Hamlin and Bell at minus 500. <laughs> That's absurd. They're the worst. Literally the worst. Here, I'll pull it up. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't even remember seeing Kevin Harvick's top 10 number at Phoenix that, that short. No. Bubba Wallace plus 130. Alex Bowman plus 150. Bowman will go on the card for sure. I just got to find a real number, not DraftKings, because fuck DraftKings. You and Alex Bowman. Top 10, man. We talked about his numbers. Yeah. I could even get frisky with brisky again this week. I can get like three to one on it instead of plus 225. SHR, shorter tracks. Love them. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. We're back, baby. One thing that I'm interested to see play out is knowing that Richmond is a little bit higher tire wear than... Uh, some of the other tracks are a little, a little more akin. I wouldn't, it's nowhere near that of Bristol, but um, it'll be interesting to see if we run into any issues like we did at Bristol, where it's the old fogies who 
early in the race are running a little bit slower than some of the youngsters yeah. and yeah. late in runs they pick up they pick up pace if we see that i might have to, it might be a good live betting opportunity here you can get chastain over your guy ryan blaney over a ford minus 105 oh that's qualifying oh good call chastain sucks at qualifying uh, no, that's fair. I I didn't realize that. You get Michael McDowell at plus money over Chase Briscoe qualifying. Play with fire, man. You might get burned. <laughs> Penske right. plus one fifty over RFK. Let me examine this here. Stuart Haas plus one twenty. Oh yeah, I'm. Vegas. I'm betting that. Make the. Mick Driver over over Briscoe uh, qualifying. T's and P's in advance, my guy. Uh, Byron over Keselowski. Hamlin Bell, Busher, Keselowski, Elliott, Bush, Truex, Larson. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Nothing compelling. It might be worth betting laying the minus 170 with 2311 over rcr because that honestly that is like trash. yeah rcr is not good even with 2311's issues oh i might hit that too ross chastain over kyle bush i know it's minus 130 but Obviously, I want to get better number on that, but let's see what Superbook has. Bell versus... Ooh. Oh, wait, uh, a race matchups. True X plus one thirty versus Denny. I like that. Why? Why bet that when you could get Gibbs plus one fifty? I mean, why not both? Oh, then you're really playing with fire. Then you go Larson, bet Denny, and then just bet Denny to win the race, and you're good. <laughs> True X plus one thirty over Bell. You could just bet Byron plus one ten over Larson. Mm-hmm. Gibbs plus one fifty over Bell. So you can bet Gibbs over Hamlin and over Bell. Ooh, Blaney over Elliot. Oh, Chastain over Elliot plus money going on the card. <laughs> Take down that average ass. Yeah, there is no reason why Ross Chastain should be a dog to Chase Elliott at any track at this point. Yeah. Ooh, your two favorites. On the very Let's bottom. Let's go versus Bowman. Love it. <laughs> I think that's, that, that should probably be priced even heavier towards Alex Bowman, if we're being honest. Yeah. Especially when you consider who's betting Chase Briscoe besides me. That is very true. Ross minus 125 against Kyle Bush. Yeah, I don't I don't hate that. The only thing again, like Bush does have a decent amount of success at this track, but just not with like not RCR. With RCR been... Not with the way RCR's working. The only thing running worse than a Ford right now is RCR. Yeah, they've been garbage. I know he did he did good here last year. He qualified on the front row twice. Yeah. But... I don't know how much of that can you take away from from them when you've seen what they don't have this season. Yeah. Betting card is um That's probably not good. Very, not very heavy this week. Yeah, it's probably good. We talked about this prior to jumping on the show like we should probably be limiting ourselves to 3 to 5 bets and just going really heavy on those 3 what to 5 that we like. That? Uh, so, oh, I guess I should look at future bets. What's his top five price? Two to one. Who's that? Logano for a top ten at two to one. Two to one. Uh, Wait for a top for a top five. I mean top five. That With the way that he's been running, it doesn't seem like a good bet. No. If I want, if I'm betting Logano to do stuff, I want to get paid out. So yeah, top four outright, then. outright yeah. that's how we're doing it. Yeah, let me look on Superbook too. His top three price. 
He's plus five twenty five. I wouldn't even touch. I wouldn't even touch that. You'd have to give me like ten to one for him to top three right now, with the way that he's been running. Yeah, especially when you can get five fifty to top four, which could be fourth or fifth or eighth. Thank you again. We talk about this all the time. You have to shop those. You have to shop those auxiliary markets because for them that makes sense. Just bet the top manufacturer. Whereas it's better to bet the top threes probably on the Toyota guys even at the lower numbers, because they have many more guys they're competing with to win the race. For sure. Uh, all right. Anything else you want to look at, or should we just give the people our thoughts, what that's on our bets right now, and uh, get out of here? Uh, ooh, driver's not completing 200 laps. You love finding these random-ass props. Yeah, they're great. Oh, we got to look at qualifying. Do we have qualifying? Oh, yeah, top qualifier. They, I think it's in there. Uh, might be early. Oh, boo. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll be on the hunt for bets. If we find stuff we like, we'll definitely be tweeting it out. So make sure you're following Brian at Brian underscore twining. Make sure you're following me at Notorious KRO over on the X, the Twitter machine. Uh, make okay, sure you are subscribed if you've yet to do that uh, smash the like button let us know your favorite outright for this week in the comments uh, the newsletter has been going out handing out winners over there aoppodcast.substack.com completely free hit the sub over there come check it out um, you know you can look at the last couple uh, editions if you want to get a feel for what we're doing over there put the latest episode put all the episodes for the week in there all that good stuff just kind of a get you set for the race on race day for the current card oh by the way i got a grid rivals moving on up brian moving on up heading to the top i did a little justin haley action i think this week nice I had to get a little dangerous with my uh open spots but uh Mo- alex bowman carrying me all the way up i think i'm in the top 20 now um even after the missing the first couple weeks so if you've yet to jump in there's still a chance you get the lowest score and then you can build your number up a uh, hundred dollar gift card completely free to join that will also be down in the comments so make sure you're doing that my betting card is three bets and three bets only there will be an alex bowman probably top 10 added and a joey logano probably top 10 Although the way the numbers are looking, maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll just stay with what I have. But currently, William Byron, 12 to 1, outright. Joey Logano, 25 to 1, outright. Joey Logano, top Ford, plus 550. The bet I'm the outright bet I'm debating still is Martin Truex of the Toyotas. He is my favorite. Brian Twining has William Byron at 12. He has McDriver over Briscoe and qualifying at plus money. He has Chastain over average ass Chase Elliott at Superbook for the race. And then he has Chastain top Chevy at six to one, which I don't hate either. Um, Obviously I'm team Byron and he's on Byron to win, but could you tell, tell me a world where it's a couple of Toyotas get first and second and Chastain's third. Absolutely. Yep. Um, And at six to one, I think that's a good, good bet. So uh, Brian, any other outrights you're considering? I know it seems like Ty Gibbs of the, Higher price Toyotas is your favorite, especially given what his number sits at. Um, but is there any outrights you're tempted to add to the car that you've yet to add? Yeah, like I mean, I've, I'm a becoming a Ross Chastain stan essentially, but I just think it's better to hit him in these other markets, just because the the Toyotas are going to be so strong. So it's hard to get to anybody that's not driving the sponsored manufacturer this week. And yeah. like you, I like Martin Truex, but. I want to see him unload fast, which when he, if he does, I don't mind hitting him at like that five to one number. Yep. Post yep. We're, we're definitely a watermelon podcaster on here. We're happy to smash him, eat him, and do whatever else. Uh, we will be uh, hopefully adding Truex to the card, assuming things go well. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Check out the NASCAR betting preview. Check out the pre-race poll with Chris Wormy every Sunday morning. Obviously hang out with us on, we'll record Saturday night. Be in your feed Sunday morning. If you're subscribed, you get a notif. You can hit the notification bell, let you know when our new episode drops. I usually drop it around 5:30 Eastern in the morning, so you can check that out with your morning coffee. 
uh, before the kids get up, before the family gets going for the day, before you're off your on your way to the track or wherever you're headed. For Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.